Okay, so if you're trying to grow a newsletter, one of the things you have to think about is the total addressable market or a TAM, which is like a really common marketing term. And it basically means just, you know, how many people are potentially going to be interested in this newsletter? What's the size of the market? And it's a lot easier to grow a newsletter if you're in a space which has a really big total addressable market. So, for instance, we've got No CS Degree, which is my website. Loads of people learn to code, thousands, tens of thousands, maybe like a million people learn to code over the next decade. So that's like a huge market. We've got a dense discovery. There's people who want to be more productive, more inspired, think critically, and they're interested in design and technology. Loads of people fit that description. Marketing examples, one of my favorite newsletters from Harry Dry. Um, marketing, you know, every business needs marketing. You know, a web developer needs marketing, making like a SaaS product. A creator needs marketing. You know, a cafe owner needs marketing, a butcher needs marketing, a plumber needs marketing. Convincingly, anyone could use like an article from the marketing examples uh, newsletter to help their business. So it's a really huge market. Um, you've got trends, which is, you know, finding business ideas. Well, you know, you've got thousands of people on that list because, well, who doesn't want a new business idea? You've got um, Scott's Cheap Flights. I mean, that's one of the, my favorite businesses because who doesn't want to save you know, money on flight? It's such an easy sell. You know, hey, we've got this newsletter. We'll send you cheap flight tickets. Well, you know, who's going to say no to that? And uh, AppSumo sending deals to entrepreneurs. They've got like a million people on their email list. Um, huge market. So you really want to think about when you're starting off, you know, how big is the likely audience? Because if you've got, you know, millions of entrepreneurs, that's going to be a much bigger market and much easier to grow a newsletter than if you're going after, you know, a really, really tiny niche. And that's not to say niches are bad. It's just that, you know, it's going to be harder to grow uh, the smaller the potential market there is. So thinking about the total addressable market when you're, uh, creating or growing a newsletter is really important. Okay, so we're looking just now at making it super easy for people to sign up to your newsletter. The number one way to have a slow growing or dead growing newsletter is basically to make it really hard for people to sign up. So we want to do the complete opposite of that, obviously, because we want loads of people on our email list. Now, I'm showing you an example here of Starter Story, which is a like blog making $50,000 a month in revenue at this moment in September 21. It's only been going for like two or three years, so it's growing like crazy. And Pat Wallace, who makes it, like he's really smart because his email form is really simple. Look, it's right there. It's the first thing you look at, and it's the main call to action or CTA as people say in marketing. And you want to have a really strong call to action to sign up for your email list. Um, the form looks really great. You've got some nice like shadow there, which makes it look really classy. Um, that's like a really good example of getting people into your email list. Because the thing you have to remember about your newsletter is you might love it and it might be the biggest thing in your life, but for other people, it's not going to be that. So you need to like get people in the door and make it as easy as possible for them to sign up to your newsletter. Don't make it hard. Here's another example of newsletter that's super easy to sign up for. It's The Hustle. This is like part of a The Hustle and Trends.co. They sold for like something like $25 million. Um, it's owned by Sam Parr and they sold it to HubSpot. And yeah, this is like, you can see why they were really successful in getting one and a half million readers because look, it's just a really simple form. You've got your email address. There's no fluff. It's talking about, you know, business and tech in five minutes or less. So that's appealing. You know, it's not going to be a long, laborious read that's going to take forever. 
And yeah, the forum is super simple. Join for free. That's like a great call to action. There's no like, you know, there's no cost to you for signing up. And they've got this little thing here, which we'll get onto in a second. But that's social proof. That's, you know, if it's trusted by one and a half million readers, you're probably going to want to read it. Okay, another great way to increase your email list is to add auto-loading to your forums. Now, we're on the dense discovery newsletter just now. It's got 34,000 readers. And something that's like immediately apparent is that the cursor is blinking because your attention is like immediately drawn to the email form and you're just kind of like nudged, kind of like nudged into like completing the email form. Uh, straight away um, so it's a really good way I've used it myself I like increase my conversions on my no CS screen newsletter like by fourfold just by adding in like this blinking cursor this auto loading and we can see the effects on other websites we go on Wikipedia it's got the same thing so you're immediately inclined to search for something we can see that a uh, newsletter and email entrepreneur, Louis Nichols, who runs lots of companies like Sparkloop to do with email marketing. He has this tweet from uh, about like a year ago now, like give me a shout out because I told him about this tip and he like wrote it up. So I'll include this in like the homework section of the course. And basically his conversions um, went up by, yeah, 6 and 23% respectively for his, like, uh, clients that he's consulting for. So, you know, I'm not making any promises like that, but Louis actually kind enough in this article to set out how you do this. So if you're a developer, it's super simple. You just write autofocus in your input tags. And um, if you're using something like Webflow, there's actually like a little box that you can tick next to your form, which just says autofocus. And if you don't have access to your HTML or you don't use Webflow, you can always, you know, hire a developer for cheap and do it really quickly. Louis says, you know, it'll take like 10 minutes. I don't think it would take that. I think it would take a minute or five minutes. Um, but yeah, it's basically super simple. Just add autofocus into that input. And that way, as we see with dense discovery, since you come to the website, you're immediately much more inclined to put your email. So this is like a really effective uh, growing an email list because it's making it super quick and simple for people to add their email. And that makes it much more likely that they're going to subscribe. Okay, we're going to explore a little growth hack here for building your email list. Um, it's a bit sneaky. I don't do it myself, but I'll let you decide if you want to do it. So we're on Failery, which is this uh, really cool newsletter website. It started off as kind of like showing, you know, why startups fail. A kind of, you know, startups graveyard kind of website. And it's kind of moved now, so it does share success stories as well. But what they do is, right, I've put my email in here and I'll click subscribe and you should see this happening. Yeah, <laughs> so they've got this timer. So it's saying like, go to your email, like check your email, confirm, because they've got like double opt-in, uh, which you should definitely have because that cuts down on spam. So like make sure people double opt into your email list but they've got this timer here this timer means nothing it is complete garbage it's rubbish nothing's gonna happen when you know this timer runs out and you haven't confirmed your email but what it does is it nudges you to go to your inbox and think oh yeah i better confirm this i've seen this on like a few sites i think the hustle by Sam Parr started this off. But yeah, it's a little bit of a cheap trick because this timer doesn't do anything. It's not real. So there's no real penalty. 
but it like moves people along. And basically the thing is, you know, with all the distractions that we have in modern life and on the internet, it's very easy to like sign up to a newsletter and then you, you know, you never get around to confirming it because you're like, oh yeah, forgot about that. You go on to something else, you know, the confirmation email lies in your inbox. You never like confirm that you want to stay in the, stay getting the newsletter. So you never end up on the list. So this is kind of like a cheeky way to like get people to like to speed up people confirming that they want to be on your list. I don't do it, but you might want to give it a try. And the guy who made this Valerie site shared the code with me, um, which he finds on the internet. So I don't can't guarantee how it works, etc. It's at your risk, of course. But um, I'll include the code in the homework section. And yeah, you might want to give this a try and let me know how it goes. So it's really important to check how your newsletter is going to look for the people receiving it. So I'm in Email Octopus and I've clicked on like the preview tab. Or well, this is just like the campaign that I sent out last week. I've just made a duplicate of that. And um, basically we can see how it'll look. So got like a blue link for the unsubscribe link. And then all the other links are this kind of nice pink. I've got my headings. Okay, everything looks everything looks really cool. Really important thing to take into account is how it look on mobile. I still get emails where I'm on like a mobile phone and I need to like, you know, scroll across because it doesn't all fit in the mobile view. And that's just a really bad experience for uh, someone receiving a newsletter. You can see here in my mobile view, everything's nicely arranged. It's all on like the one viewpoint. It's not going to um, have any problems for the person receiving the newsletter. They're just going to be able to read it like while holding their phone. Uh, they don't have to scroll across or anything annoying like that. So yeah, that's really important. Everyone's using mobiles now to like read online content. So you have to make sure that your newsletter looks good on every device, not just on desktop. And yeah, you'd be surprised how many newsletters I get where I do have to do this thing with my phone where I have to like scroll across and it's pretty annoying. And those kind of like user experience things that are annoying might just cause people to unsubscribe because, you know, if you're not making it convenient for someone to read your newsletter, then you're not showing them much courtesy or respect. So, you know, I think a lot of people will leave an email list if they're finding it just hard to read. So get the basics right and just make sure it looks good on your desktop and your mobile as well. Okay, this is a bit of a technical UI tip, but I just got it from someone on Twitter and it totally makes sense. So this is my newsletter for developer jobs and I basically use like Google Chrome Inspector to look at the mobile view. So this is how it looks on like a mobile phone. And as you can see, the email form there is like about perfect because it's round about where your thumb will be. I'm going to like show you with my brick of an Android phone. But if you can imagine you're holding a phone, your thumb's probably like around here, yeah? Um, if you have your form way up at the top on mobile, you like most people probably aren't going to like go up here to press it because it's just not very convenient. So if you can try to get like your email form on mobile around like the bottom of where someone's like thumb will be for their phone so they can just like quickly tap in their email. That is a really good tip. Basically what you can do to test this is go on the Google Chrome dev tools and you can just basically inspect anything and you can see how your website looks on mobile view. I can share a link to that in the homework tasks document. But um, yeah, basically super effective way to see the, how the user interface works and if it's going to be easy for people to actually sign up for their newsletter when they're using a mobile, which is, you know, like important these days because your, your, your website has to be mobile friendly, super important. So just make it easier for people to sign up instead of trying to like reach all the way up with their thumb on their phone 
which most people probably aren't going to bother to do, make it like at the bottom of the screen and just make it easier for people to sign up basically. Okay, we're going to go over the concept of social proof now. Imagine you're walking down the street and you see a restaurant and there's no one in it. You're probably not going to want to go inside that restaurant and have a meal, are you? Now, you walk a bit further and you see another restaurant and it's full to the brim. There's tons of people there. They all look really happy. Um, you're probably going to rush in and go and eat at that restaurant. Okay, now social proof is just basically the idea that we're influenced by what other people do. So just like if we see lots of people in a bar or restaurant, we want to go there rather than the bar that's dead. And the same thing applies to newsletters. Now I'm using an example here from Harry Dry's website, marketingexamples.com. And what Harry's done here that's really smart is he said in this email form, 58,708 people, marketers and entrepreneurs read it, I'd love you to join. Okay, so you're immediately thinking, okay, there's like almost 60,000 people signed up to this newsletter. So other people like me have signed up for this newsletter. It's probably pretty good. Now, this is what most people do with their email forums. They put a figure. So they say like, you know, 5,000 developers signed up for jobs, things like that. What Harry's done, which is like a step further, which is awesome, is he's included these quotes from people. So you might not know these people, but they're really big in like the entrepreneur space. Um, so this is like Anne-Laura LeCamp, who does like Nest Labs blog, real productivity expert. This is Ben Tossel, who sold MakerPad, the no-code community for, I don't know, probably a few million. Um, this guy used to work for Bear Metrics. So these are like influential people. And he's basically gathered all these quotes from people saying how good his newsletter is. And if you scroll down, there's like so many, there's like 77 of these. This is like amazing social proof because he's not just putting the numbers and not just saying like 3,000 people or 5,000 people or whatever are signed up for my newsletter. He's saying, look, here are all the people who are like providing quotes and saying how good the newsletter is. So if at all possible, I would gather quotes from people that read your newsletter, if possible, like have a photo as well, because that makes it more real. It means people can connect with that person, connect with the content and add those to your newsletter sign up form or your newsletter sign up page, because they're going to provide so much value in terms of growing your newsletter because it's really a case of we do what other people do we might think that you know we're all individual geniuses and we don't have any influences from the outside world or the rest of society but it's not really true you know if your friend tells you that a nightclub is amazing you're more likely to go if your friend says that you know you should listen to this album you're more likely to listen to that album so using social proof is a great way to boost your email list. Okay, so another great way to grow your newsletter is actually to give something away for free. Now, this seems obvious, but people like free stuff. So if you give them like a free PDF of something, like you can make an ebook really easily in like Google Docs, save it as a PDF, put that on Gumroad or Podia or anywhere else. And when they confirm their email, just send it to them automatically in your welcome email with a link to like a free PDF or, you know, whatever else, something that's free, easy to produce for you, but something that's like valuable to them. Because if you're trying to get people to sign up for your newsletter, obviously, if you're offering them like a freebie, it has to be like something that they value and something that is worthwhile to them. But I'll give you some examples. So on my website, I've got this like imposter syndrome ebook, which is like a collection of quotes that self-taught bootcamp developers have about overcoming imposter syndrome. I packaged them into an ebook, and then I was like, "Well, my priority is like growing my email list rather than making a few bucks from selling an ebook." So I actually started giving it away for free and said, "Like, okay, when you join up for my newsletter, you can get this ebook." And that worked 
amazing. Um, so yeah, you can see that it's like part of the appeal of signing up is like, this is my job board. Okay, you're not only getting job board alerts, but you're also getting this free ebook. So it's kind of like, well, yeah, why wouldn't I sign up? And as we said before, like dead easy for him. Um, so there's this other developer, Flavio Copes, who writes loads of ebooks and he does the same thing. He's like, all right, you want to learn Python? Okay, click here. And then he's just like, oh yeah, you can get the ebook as soon as you join my newsletter. And guess what? Like thousands of people do. Um, we can have another example, Randall Kanna, who's a developer that I've interviewed on nocestgree.com. And yeah, she put together this whole kind of like huge kind of document on, you know, how to find a job as a developer and how to, you know, she says how to crush the technical interview and stuff like that. And like a whole lot of resources packed into this like PDF document. And yeah, she just gives away for free on her email list. So you just have to sign up and then you get this cool thing and then she gets a bigger email list. So if we go over to Twitter, we can see, you know, right after she launched it, um, she got, you know, 500 downloads. So I think overall she, I can't find the tweet, but I think she grew it to her list to something like 30,000 just by giving away like free resources. So that's like a really like neglected thing to do. But if you give away something for free, you're going to get a much bigger list. Now, some haters are going to say like, oh, people are just going to get that book and unsubscribe. And okay, some people might do that, but a lot won't. And I think it's just kind of like human nature that people want the cheapest thing that they can. They want stuff that's free. Nobody pays more for anything than they have to. So if you're saying to people, hey, if you sign up for my email list, I'll give you this thing for free, then that's going to be like really grabby and really appealing. And that's going to get more people into your email list. And so, yeah, your task is basically make something for free, add it on Gumroad or Podia, make it super simple, but then you'll definitely grow your email list with this technique. Okay, so I won't go over the process of making an ebook in Gumroad, but it's super easy to do. You can just make anything in Google Docs, save it as a PDF, get a free Gumroad account, and then just upload it there and set the prices free. So that's like super simple. So I've got this ebook that I'm offering for people that sign up. One thing that's I'd say is important is you want to give that to them straight away. You don't want to like bury it in an email. Uh, because that's not very fair. So this is the welcome email that everyone gets that signs up for the list. So I've reminded them and said thank you for joining and reminded them why they're signing up for this list. And then straight away I've got this, here's your free copy of the imposter syndrome ebook, because realistically that's why some of the people will have signed up just to get the ebook. So that's fair enough. So you want to have that straight away. You don't want to like hide it at the bottom or something because that's like quite unfair and a bit spammy. Um, so you want to make like it very easy for them to access the thing that you've promised them basically. And you can just basically, um, if I click here and like check the text, it's like a Gumroad link here. So you can put a link to Gumroad. You can put a link to, you know, Google Drive or anywhere you want, wherever you've put something for free, that's fine. Okay, we're on the very excellent marketingexamples.com website by Harry Dry. He's very good at like optimizing his newsletter. And yeah, bingo, here it is. We've got a exit pop-up. So what happened here was I was on Harry's website and you know, obviously after I'd gorged myself on all the amazing content, I was ready to leave. And that's when Harry provides the sign up form. So basically you don't want the pop up to arrive as soon as someone comes to their website because it's just really off putting. 
you haven't provided them with any value and you're immediately saying, hey, hey, like sign up for my thing, which is pretty aggressive and it's not good. And what Harry does on marketing examples is he waits until you're about to leave the website. You've already got value. You've already experienced the website and hopefully you've enjoyed it. And then you're far more receptive to signing up for an email list once you've already consumed something and you've enjoyed the content than if you're just walking in for the first time. And Harry actually uses a really good example marketing examples saying it's a bit like, you know, if you walk into a museum and someone asks you for a donation, you're probably not going to like hand over five bucks or 10 bucks or whatever. But if you've gone around to a museum and you've really enjoyed it and on your way out, someone says, hey, do you want to make a contribution? You're far more likely. Okay, so I just thought I'd show you how I make pop-up forums in Email Octopus. So we're in the landing pages and forums section. As you can see, everything's like really super easy to navigate here. We're going to go on create. Uh, you can make a landing page, by the way, with Email Octopus, which is cool. But we are going to make a form. So we've got like choose the list which we're going to send people to. So this is like my only list, but it's for an OCS degree. And you can choose like an inline form, but I'm going to go over pop-ups just now and I'm going to save that and then we are going to go for this one here which basically has a bit of text along with it so like a kind of call to action and then form here so as you can see here you can like drag um, any elements that you want into the form so we can like drag an image in here and drop it and if you click there, you can change the image to anything you like. It could be like a picture of a, you know, happy customer or, you know, if it's a, you know, a job board or something, someone celebrating getting a job or, you know, whatever kind of image fits your brand. Uh, you can change like the image settings, so you make them a bit smaller. You can change the alignment. You can add alt text, which is good for accessibility reasons. So if we go back here, imagine you've got an image there. We can change this to be like, you know, get a remote job quick or something like that. And we can change where it's aligned. We can put that into the center and then we can add something here like, you know, 99% of people don't unsubscribe. Um, which is like something I've done in the past with forums is put like a figure like that, you know, just check your unsubscribe figures, but some data like that kind of reassures people. And then you can go down here and maybe I'll like just change that button background color to something that fits my brand a bit better. So I could do like a kind of green color here and green's quite good because if you think of it like a traffic light, you know, green is the kind of go, proceed kind of sign. If you have red, red is traditionally like, you know, danger, that's bad. Um, and you can change anything else in this form in terms of style. Let's say we want to change the button text. We can have that as like get hired which might be like a more strong like call to action than just subscribe. Or we can just do some variation like sign up now to create some urgency or something like that. Um, if we go into settings, we can change like the margin and padding of everything around here. If we go back a stage, we can go into the style and we can choose like a font which fits for your brand. I personally like Lato, you could go for something like very hipster, like Helvetica. If you wanted to maybe get more like views or be trolling or whatever, you could do Comic Sans. Uh, you can do like whatever font you want and you can like change the color here and the background color. So let's say we've got like a blue in our brand. We could go to the blue color, could find something like this 
and then we could change the default color and make it white so that it shows up well and you know we could i hate comic sans <laughs> i can't look at that anymore uh we'll change it back to lato um so you know you can change the pop-up form to kind of fit the style of your own own website and very cool we've got some like advanced settings here so the showing success message is really just what what is someone going to see when they actually fill in the form so you can say like check your inbox to confirm your subscription which which is pretty smart or you can do something kind of a bit more out there like you know great choice because that's you know something a bit quirky uh, it's not something that people typically see so it might make your newsletter stand out a bit more you can redirect to a different page so you could have a page which you know has like confetti coming down or you know shows like a gif of people celebrating or or just you know a different message that you want on your website you just put the link in there and another thing you can do on the forum is you can add a consent box if you want to like tick all the boxes literally for a gdpr you've got some other options here so i really like having it as a exit pop-up but you could do it as someone scrolls so the advantage of that is if someone's already got to like halfway through your article they're probably quite invested and probably quite interested in what you've got to say so that can be a good time to kind of give them a nudge and just be like hey do you want to sign up for the newsletter now and in a similar fashion you can do time elapsed maybe your page doesn't have like a big size to scroll down but maybe it's just time elapsed so you can edit this and you can just have like you know 30 seconds or 20 seconds or whatever but this will mean that the pop-up will come after this amount of time and you can also do it when a link is clipped which is very cool i think as well another good feature is you can change what kind of devices the pop-ups appear on which is really useful because personally i don't think it's really great if a pop-up appears on mobile i think it's more likely that someone will fill it in on desktop so for this one i could just say i just want it to show on desktop if you want it to appear on all just click all and yeah you can choose any device you want to pop up to appear on and i guess as well just thinking out loud you could make different pop-ups to maybe trigger on different devices which might be a cool thing to do and finally you can change how often people see pop-ups on your website. So you've got this one as the default, it goes on every day, but maybe you don't want to have pop-ups so often. So you might have it every week or whatever kind of interval you want. But basically it's really cool an email octopus so that you can change like what device people see pop-ups on and how often they see them. And that can be like really good for just um, fine tuning when people are seeing these pop ups. Hey, thanks for checking out my video on growing newsletters. If you look in the description, you can find a link to the full course. There is a whole extra hour of content on growing newsletters by using techniques like improving your open rates, using podcasts to promote your newsletter and loads more. Also, anyone that signs up with the course can get 30% off paid plans with Email Octopus for the first three months if they're a new customer. So if you've liked this content, please check out the course. It's really popular on Gumroad and you can learn stacks more about growing your email list.